Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to Australian Open Day 5. A recap of the round 3 matches on the bottom half of the draw. There are still one match uh, that is playing and uh, that's between Marian Cilic and Andrei Rublev. Cilic is up two, se two sets here. He won the first set 7-5 and the second set in tie-break. So Andrei Rub Rublev will have a difficult uh, route here if you want to turn the stake around. Rublev, we all know, is one of the most consistent top, inconsistent top 15 players I've ever seen together with uh, Fonini and Monfils. He has actually never done a superbly great result at Grand Slams. He has a great serve, a great forehand. His backhand is decent, but his shot selections and uh, the artillery that he possesses doesn't create so much. He just put the balls in play. He doesn't do much, so much with the ball, and that's why he has never reached deep in a Grand Slam event. And an old fox like Cilic, if he takes him out, that means his status, his quality is very overrated in my opinion. But he can still win this match. Everything can happen in sports like you all know. All right. Um, first of all, uh, we have the top seed that is here, and that's Medvedev. He won in three straight sets against the Dutch player Botic van der Sandschlup in three straight sets. It was a walk in the park. Medvedev was a solid wall that has been in this tournament. He means business like uh, Shasha and Nadal. He's here to win. He will not be satisfy satisfied with anything else. So Medvedev is looking real good. On to the next round. Where is going to meet Cressy, the... American guy that took out O'Donnell in four sets. He did 28 aces, uh, 71 winners and 21 unforced errors against O'Donnell. He won 84% behind his first serve and 68% behind his second serve. So this American dude has a great serve, a superbly great forehand. Actually an amazing forehand. He has great shot tolerance, but it will be another task. It will be a too difficult task for him to defeat uh, Medvedev, I believe. Medvedev advanced in three straight sets here. Uh, so, all said and done, Cressy has done a great tournament and um, we'll, we will hopefully see him in the bigger tournaments in the future that is in ahead of us. And then we had Stefanos Tsitsipas who dropped the set against Benoit Paria. Uh, he dropped the third set in a tie break where he mentally checked out. He was unfocused. He took a little, a little small vacation there. But all in all, Tsitsipas served great. He won 89% by his first serves and 65% by his second serve. He did 47 winners and 26 unforced errors in this match. And that's better. He has reduced his unforced errors number uh, by margin. But he meets Benoit Parea, a kinder egg player that you never know what to expect from his racket. If your racket talks the right way, you will have problem. And Tsitsipas got a problem in the third set where, where he lost the tie break. But all in all, Benoit Paria's game is not enough. He has horrible returns. He has a weak forehand and he is mentally fragile like a snowflake. So Benoit Paria is easily to disturb. He easily gets unmotivated, he has his temper issues, but when he wants to play tennis, we saw that in the match against Tsitsipas, he actually has a high level when he plays, but the problem is his high level is very low, and that's why he's not a title contender at the biggest events like Grand Slam and Masters. And the Greek, Greek played Comfortably, he played focus on this match. You saw that he wasn't a quality player. The quality between these two players was obvious in this match. Tsitsipas is a first-strike tennis player that likes to go around and hit that for amazing forehand. His shot tolerance on the 5-plus points has in improved be better lately, but still he has to be better on his return. He still has to convert those opportunities a lot more often than he, than he did. Today, three times was enough and he won the match, but on um, another 
player that, and, and and against another player with a better all round game he will have difficulties uh, Stefano Sitspas. Three out of eleven break points is okay. This match was not a big test for him, but we can see that uh, Stefanos is in full shape now. He's uh, not struggling with his elbow. So in the next round, he will take on Tyler Fritz, who defeated the old Fox uh, RBA in a five-set battle. I think that uh, he bageled him in the first set, and then RBA won two sets, and then Fritz came back. He returned tremendously good in this match against RBA. He actually outgrinded him from the baseline. He moved the Spaniard around the court. The, this counter-puncher Spaniard, he moved him all around the court and made him do a, a lot of unforced errors. So Tyler Fritz, I really stepped up. He has gone under the radar. I mentioned him as one of my dark horses. So I'm uh, actually very, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm proud because I don't know the guy, but I like his game. I like that he has improved his game and that he's um, here to compete for the quarterfinal spot. And will he do that? Maybe he can take out Tsitsipas, that's for sure. Tsitsipas, in my opinion, is the slight favorite here. 65 35, I, I give. It's not slight, but I give him the edge here. They have met four times. They are up two and two in the head to head. Stefanos has won the last two, the, the two previous matches. So, all in all, I think that Stefanos is the better player. He has more tools in his box. So, I, that's why I think he will advance. And then we have Felix Auger Aliasime, who defeated Evans in three straight sets. He actually destroyed him. He played so solid in this match. He, he he was clean hitting from the start to the end. He dictated the rallies, the game, every point from the start to the uh, end. His returns was superbly great in this match. And um, he was really on fire from both his wings. He actually went for the trigger. He wasn't that cautious uh, that he can be sometimes. He wasn't um, uh, hesitating. He totally did 40 winners and 21 unforced errors. He won 91% by his first serve. Huge numbers. You need those numbers in the next round also. And 57% by his second serve. Also a huge number. And um, he converted 6 out of 7 break points. So, uh, returning game. The baseline game from both wings uh, was superb in this match against this... Uh, Dan Evans that likes that he really doesn't possess any great weapons, so he was not a threat for an offensive player like Auger today. He likes to slice, he likes to cut the balls down. He doesn't have big cuts on his swing, so uh, he really didn't came up with the goods today. Dan Evans, he was not there, and when he was there on court, the other player, the Canadian youngster, was much better. Or, or overall. Great for Felix, and he's gonna take on uh, either Chilich or uh, Rublev. It looks like now that he's gonna take on Chilich. He has met him twice and lost. He has met Rublev twice and lost, so it can only get better from here. So Felix is one of those uh, players that has really mat matured and taking that step into the top level room. All right, then we had Yannick Sinner. He's also on my top eight list together with Felix, Tsitsipas and Medvedev that play today. Sinner defeated Taro Daniel in a four set uh, battle. Even though he dropped the set, th there was nothing really, really nothing to worry about because this hard hitting light version of Thomas Berdish had an had ace in his pocket. He hit so many winners in this match. I forgot the number. I think it was around 58 and did 31 winners. He returned supremely great in this match. If you look at the stats, I didn't watch that game, but if you look at the stats, he won 33% in Taro Daniel's serve and 41, 47% on his second serve. From what I know, Taro Daniel doesn't possess the greatest serve on tour, but his serve is rock so solid anyway. So he... he is a spot server, this Japanese guy that has defeated Mari in the previous round and he actually defeated Novak Djokovic, like I said in my previous video in, at Indian Wells 2018. So he has defeated two former number ones and now he, he couldn't uh, do anything against one of the top guns that's gonna rule 
the tennis world in the future together with guys like Alcaraz, Ali Asime, maybe Shapovalov, if we can get this act together. But from what I um, saw on the highlights, uh, Sinner moved pretty well in this uh, battle. He did a great job from the baseline. You know, it's hard to resist that firepower if the if the balls come short and land us in uh, Sinner's striking zone. There's really nothing much you can do uh, when, when when he is aiming for that ball. He, uh, his um, um, sweet spot is very delicate and his sweet spot he finds that sweet spot on his racket very often. He's a national hard hitter like Andre Agassi, who is the cleanest ball striker I've seen in my life. I've seen plenty of players through this three decade that I watch tennis, but I've never seen anybody hit the ball clean as Andre Agassi. All right, uh, I think I got everything here. Uh, Deminar um, defeated Andujar Alba in three straight sets. Uh, nothing fancy pants there. Deminar is going to take on Sinner. Sinner is up 2-1. Uh, de uh, he defeated uh, Deminar in the eight next gen. I, uh, I, I'm not sure if there was the final there, but he defeated. I remember that. So I will hold uh, Sinner as a slight favorite, but this light version of Leighton Hewitt is a fighter and he's playing here at Australian Open. He has reached the fourth round. He smells blood also. So if he can take out Sinner, in a, a four or five set battle, I will not be surprised because I believe that Demonar has have a little better fatigue, a, a little bit better stamina than uh, Sinner, who doesn't have the best physique, uh, to be honest. But I think that he will outpower um, a guy with no weapons like Sinner. Not easy, but he's if he's uh, hitting clean, if he's working up on a, on a good day. He will take out Dimenar for sure. No problem there. And now, with the four rounds matches in ahead of us, Shasha means business. He's here to win. He's not here to uh, go back to Germany in the first week. He means business. The same with Medvedev. The same with Nadal. Those are the three most solid-looking guys. And RBA uh, crashed out, but his countrymen, PCB, have an decent chance to cause an upset in the next round against Berrettini. I will not be su surprised because he was going to aim for Berrettini's weak backhand. And we all know that Berrettini is one of the worst uh, returner in top 10. So I believe that RBA is going to, no, uh, PCB is going to make life very difficult for uh, Berrettini in the next round. All right, folks, that was all for today. Thank care, take care and thank you for watching this video. Bye bye.